a blessed Thursday evening of November 30, 2023. We would like to welcome everyone to our Thursday Red Talks edition. And tonight is very special, extra special, because we will do three things. One is we will have the series finale of our present series. And then, of course, our end of the month, bring to the table um, communion. And so we remind everyone to uh, prepare the communion ele elements. And number three, one extra special is that we will formally announce or launch our Spotify for Red Talks Storytelling Bible Study. So good evening, everyone. And for those of you who has not logged in yet, my name is Sister Marie Uwamil from, uh, of course, for those who are regulars, we know that we are on a third year already of our Red Talks Divine Storytelling Quentuhan every Tuesday and Thursday that runs from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Tonight, it is extra special. And we will do three things. So comment three. Number one is we will have our series finale of our present series. And number two, we will have a communion as we always do. And we titled that Bring to the Table. And number three, we will have an announcement our, uh, our, of our Spotify account. And so may I call on our speaker for the month of November. Josh Chua. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. As always, we're so happy that you're here. We're grateful for the time that you're investing with us. And I hope and I pray on that our hearts are ready to encounter God, to receive Him. But more than that, also to be able to fellowship with your families, with your friends, together with you. So, tawagan niyo na po yung mga kapamilya niyo uh, so that we can uh, begin our episode for tonight. So, we will be talking about hope for tomorrow. Hope for tomorrow tonight. So, I hope that you're all excited. Sister Marie? Yeah. Episode 9, parang kailan lang, Josh, we are landing this series. And praise God. No, I hope that you can still remember all the titles. Episode 1, Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow. Two, throwback glory. Three, rooted and grounded. Number four, to tarry. Number five, waiting and moving. Episode six, being. Uh, episode seven, rushing. And just last Tuesday, the affection of attention. Tonight, tonight, ang ganda, the hope for tomorrow. Isn't that what we want? There is always a hope for tomorrow. But considering the present, no, we need to talk about the present so that we will know our hope for tomorrow. Tonight, Joss, as I said earlier, I hope that many are logged in already kasi consistent naman tayo na talaga 7 p.m. we start and most of our regulars talagang punctual sila and we praise God. So tonight, medyo marami tayong uh, pag-uusapan. But first, Josh, we would like to announce, of, of course, formally announce that for the last three years that we've been doing Facebook Live, this year, the faithfulness of God, once again, are being shown in one of um, one of the most accessible platform, and that is Spotify. So we praise God tonight. We will pray for this um, Spotify. Spotify platform and later on maybe Josh can include that in the last part of uh, the finale. We are going to access it. We have a podcast uh, available in Spotify and we call that also the same Red Talk. So most of our episodes since year one are already available. And I hope you guys, hindi naman kayo ma-overwhelm. Baka naman tig to 15 minutes ang pakinggan nyo. But you know, Josh, the beauty about Spotify is that even you're on the go, as you said earlier before we started, no? na you can easily access it. You can find a simple corner of a quiet time with the Lord 
and enjoy the episode one of yesterday and today and tomorrow. So you guys, I know that some of you has already tested it and I got a very good response. And in fact, no, many audience na talaga ang nag, uh, mga regular ano natin, attendees ang nag-request nitong podcast na to, Josh. And that is why, praise God, we were able to mount it. And so tonight of November 30, you guys can enjoy already our podcast. But then we wanted also to ask for your uh, feedback reviews so that we can make it better and of course the goal is for many to access it and we hope to ask for your help to share and link uh, no, to share our link to your friends and your loved ones and later on we will um, put in the comment section uh, and uh, we will tag many uh, as much as we can so that you know already um, the account in the podcast in the meantime We'd like to ask your help that we can always maximize the platform so that we can usher many more lives uh, to the good news of salvation. Kasi sayang naman po na hindi madinig ng iba yung tutari, di ba? Uh, I hope that everyone can enjoy being hindi lang kami ni Sister Jane or ni, sis, ni Sister Cleo, you know. The rest of your loved ones all over the globe. And remember, um, Red Talks Mo is free. Wala tayong uh, hinihinging anything except that this is for the love, for for the love of our hearts for the Lord. So if your friends wanted to uh, see Josh, you cannot see Josh in Spotify. You can hear Josh in Spotify. But if you want to see his face, you go to Facebook Live. But Josh, I wanted to also ano, no, to tell everyone, baka naman hindi na pumunta ng Facebook Live because yung real time, yung present is very important. And here, dito po tayo, we, as a body of Christ, we've been coming together every Tuesday and Thursday. It's important that we are the ones, parang we are, are the core to pray for the Red Dogs and many lives will be ushered through us. Otherwise, walang mag-share ng link pag wala po tayo dito. Okay? Josh, would you like to uh, share something about our podcast? Yeah, I guess, uh, well, I, number one, I'm very happy about this. So I'm very excited because, yun nga po, as, we, as we've been talking about in the last episode, it's so important that, yes, we have a dedicated time with the Lord and sometimes, you know, different tools and methods will help such as playing worship music, listening to Christian podcasts, and other types of tools. So I, I pray that this will be one of those things that will be able to help us get closer to the Lord. But even more than that, you know, as, as we talk about um, being Christians, being living a life of worship, this life of worship permeates into every day of our lives, into every activity that we do. So sometimes there are going to be days that are busier than the others. And, you know, because of those types of days, we hope and we pray that uh, by providing another additional tool that we can bring with us on the go, whether we're driving, whether we're cooking, whatever it is, we're still even able to listen to the word of God, spend time with the Lord, even while we're living life. No? And uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just very excited because I, I hope and I pray you now that uh, as you've seen in this past series, in this present, present actually, no, present series, uh everything we're talking about is connected to all the other episodes but mm -hmm. really every series we have is connected to other series as well and that's what we're trying to do here at red talks so as we, as we journey together kasi ito naman samahan po natin to diba so, sabay-sabay po tayo na mamuhay uh, ng buhay na kristiyano as we journey through our christian living together we try and we aim and we pray to really build on all the past teachings, all the past learnings that we've already discussed. And mm. you know that's why when every series that we provide, we pray about it. Every mm. series that we talk about and we share and we discuss here at Red Talks, the idea is that it is supposed to be in sync with the past series and it's supposed to be building on top of each other. So while wala namang required order na dapat series 1, 2, 3, wala namang ganun, 
but really if 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 we have a more full picture of the goodness and love of god from the beginning of the bible to the end it allows us to appreciate the love of god for us even better so i hope that with this tool now it provides you a an accessible platform to really revisit the past series the past teachings and understand uh the past truths that we discuss and that we're building on and constantly still revisiting up until this day so i hope that you're all excited as we are and we're, we're we're very grateful because we wouldn't be here without your partnership without your support uh so i hope that you are also as blessed by this as we are sister marie well said josh and can i pray for everyone before we dive into the message of God tonight, episode 9, Hope for Tomorrow. Let us pray. Father God, we're so thankful. We're so grateful, Father God. Today is extra special because you made things possible. Three years ago, we don't know how this simple, basic storytelling Bible study will um, be a benefit for other people. Our heart is just to do something special for you. And yet, Lord, today, we have so many friends we call Red Talks families. And tonight, we thank you for your faithfulness because you have allowed us to be accessible in another platform. We can say everything, Lord, but our bottom line is we just do this because we love you. We want to be an ambassador of your goodness. We want to be storytellers, all of us here, Father God. As we share the link of our new podcast in Spotify, I pray, Lord, that everyone will play their role as they vertically source everything from you. Father, I pray for many lives to be transformed as they hear your episodes since year one. Thank you, Lord, even for tonight as we land the series, present series. We thank you, Lord, for the practicality of this series. And I thank you because I am transformed. And I'm sure many of us here are transformed and many lives will be even transformed more as many people listen to this by a live or podcast. And we, I pray, Lord, also for our bring to the table, our month and communion. Thank you, Lord, that we have the opportunity to come to your table, talk to you about things, and even more, we want to thank you for dying in the cross to free us from our sin. We thank you, Lord, for that gift of salvation. Sometimes we, we, we don't really say that, but Lord, we appreciate it so much. We thank you. We love you. Tonight, Lord, once again, we welcome the Holy Spirit in every corner of our home, wherever we are. And we thank you for just for allowing him to be the storyteller of the present series. Thank you, Lord, for tonight. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you very much, Sister Marie. So good evening, everyone. Welcome again to Red Talks. Welcome to our episode for tonight, the last episode of the present series, which will be discussing the hope for tomorrow. So, you know, we, we spent nine, including today, tonight nine different episodes talking about the importance of being present talking about what it means to be present and not just that but what it means to be present in the presence of the lord so i hope that it has been a life-changing series for each and every one of us and something that i believe we'd like to live out every day even after this series even after this month ends actually especially since parating na po yung christmas i can't believe magde december na po parang bilis but I hope that we're able to practice being present with the Lord all the more as life gets busy, as the schedules get hectic, as work and even social life 
family gatherings, Christmas parties come into play. I hope that number one priority pa rin natin is going to always be God. It's always going to be our relationship and our pursuit of the Lord and by the Lord. Kasi two-way naman yan, di ba? So in the same way that we've been talking about how in the past episode last Tuesday, we were talking about the affection of attention. And we were talking about how it's so important to be focused, to be present, because that's our way of telling God, Lord, I'm here. Lord, I'm focused on you. Lord, I'm ready to encounter you, to meet with you, to receive from you. And sana naman, I pray na ginawa po natin yung... Uh, application natin no, of that in your own quiet time and I hope that we are having our quiet time no matter how long or short it is no matter whether, whether it's in your bedroom it's in your car whatever it is no, as long as we have that time with God I hope and I pray that nagawa po natin application which is see Jesus with you close your eyes and picture Jesus right beside you because I believe that as we go through life seeing Jesus with us the way we're, we live our life is going to be so different and I know people who go so far as to bringing an empty chair beside them as a visual reminder that we're not alone. So every time we have red talks, every time we we come together on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I hope no na maintindihan at maalala po natin na hindi lang po si Sister Marie nandito, hindi lang po ako nandito, kundi pati si Jesus kasama niyo po sa kwarto niyo, kasama niyo po sa paligid niyo, that God is here. And as the word of God says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I will be. So we know from episode one, we were talking about the manifest presence of God, that God is here. The, and this is what we're talking about. We're referencing other episodes. Kaya pakinggan yun sa Spotify if you haven't heard of the past episodes yet. But in any case, we're going to jump into the hope for tomorrow. Uh, so tawagan niyo na po yung nanay, tatay niyo, kay, yung mga kapatid niyo, kaibigan niyo. Uh, because we're going to be starting with Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 18 to 28. So as you turn your Bibles there to Romans 8, 18 to 28. So manabi pong 8. Um, you know, I, I hope that we're all excited for tonight's word. Uh, so I hope actually na may Bibles kayo na physical. No? Kasi iba, iba pa rin po ko kapag may physical Bible style that we can highlight, underline, read para makita niya po na hindi lang namin iniimbento to pero na, na, nasa Biblia po talaga to. So, Romans chapter 8, verses 18 to 28. Ito po yung sinabi dito. I consider that our present sufferings, yung, pinagdadaan, yung pinagdadaanan po natin ngayon, are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. This is Paul telling us that, you know, yes, there are sufferings, there are hardships, there are trials in life, but in light of what's coming up ahead, in light of the glory of God that is there, the sufferings that we're going through is nothing. Kasi sobrang ganda, sobrang laki po ang promise ng Panginoon para sa atin. Verse 19, the creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. That's us. What Paul is saying here is that all creation is waiting for the church to rise up, for the people of God to raise their hand and say, I'm present here in this world. I'm here to make a difference for the name of the Lord. So everything and everyone in all of creation, Paul is saying, they're waiting because all of creation knows God. It's only human beings who have rebelled against God. But the Basabe sa Biblia that if 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 we keep our mouth shut, the rocks themselves will cry out in worship of God. And we know from science that rocks are actually emitting a sound from the inside. And there are sounds that are being emitted by stars and planets and galaxies. So we know that science is actually catching up to what the Bible already knows to be true. Verse 20. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, Tayapo, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, so as Christians who've been baptized, who 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 have surrendered their lives to the Lord, who choose to follow God uh, and Jesus, right? 
groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope, in this hope, we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Kasi nandiyan na eh. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Verse 26. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself, the Holy Spirit, intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. So, minsan po, lumalapit po sa, tayo sa Panginoon, tapos hindi natin alam, anong dapat sabihin? Ano yung tamang, um, tama ko dapat sabihin para malabas yung nasa loob ng puso ko? Para mailabas ang, ang, ang pinaghihirapan ko sa loob, sa kinalooban natin. And sometimes, all we can say is, Lord! All we can say is, hirap! And God already knows. God knows what we're going through. In your present struggles and in your present trials, God knows. All we have to do is cry out to Him. All we have to do is say His name and He will be quick. Diba sabi natin in two episodes, three episodes ago, that God is quick to restore us. God is quick to love us. God is quick to deliver us. And the second we cry out, He is there to save us. So, that's an hour. the Spirit will intercede for us with groans that words cannot, cannot express. Verse 27. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. The saints are all of us. Verse 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. This is our text for tonight. And you know, in verse 28, very common verse, a lot of people quote it, a lot of people say it over themselves, but they forget that ito pala yung context. That God works together for the, God, all things, in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. The, the context of this is that these people are waiting eagerly for God, are, are, are putting their trust in the hope that God has provided. This is why we know that we have a hope for tomorrow. And twice, the banggit, yung eagerly waiting. Can we comment that down below? Eagerly waiting. We are eagerly waiting for God. So we're going to be talking about three things, three truths, three perspectives that we should have as Christians, as every Christian. I believe that the modern day Christian, marami na pong nawala sa atin, no? na, sa pananaw natin, sa paniniwala natin, sa doktrina natin, that the early church held so dearly, held so closely. And we believe it, but we don't hold on to it as tightly, as fastly, as firmly as the early church. And I want us to really get back to that. I want us to value the very same things that the early apostles valued because it, if it's true for them, it is true for us. If it's important for them, it is important for us. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is hopeful present. Can you comment that down below? Hopeful present. The word hopeful really means hope-filled. Kaya it's full of hope, di ba po? So if you want your present to be full of hope, this is for you. You know, our, our, our topic for tonight, our title is Hope for Tomorrow. And maybe some of you saw the title and thinking, may, may, may pag-asa pa ba? Magbabago pa ba? Magiging mas maganda pa ba ang kinabukasan ko? Is there still hope for tomorrow in light of everything that's happening around the world? Is there still hope for tomorrow in light of wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes, pandemics, pestilence, famine? This is a verse from the Bible. God says that, when the end draws near, these things will happen. But fear not, because the time is still not yet here. It is still coming. It is drawing closer and closer as every day passes. What is that time? That's what we're going to be talking about tonight. No? But I just can't help but remember yung mga kaibigan ko who, who come to me and they're like, they, they would talk to me about yung mga plano ko sa buhay, yung mga balak ko, whether it's personally, yung gusto kong gawin, or yung professional development ko, or really the most relevant is they talk to me about how I envision my future family to be. Na ilang anak gusto ko, gano kalaki, saan kami mag, magtitira. Um, and one of the common things I hear from my friends is that ayaw nilang mga anak. They're hesitant 
to have children. Why? Because, sinasabi sabi nila, tingnan mo naman yung mundo na ngayon. Ang gulo-gulo na. It would be wrong for me, sabi nila. It would be wrong for me to bring my child in a world that is so full of chaos, with in a world that is hopeless, in a world that is filled with so much hate and fear and anger and strife. And maybe if I didn't have God, I would view the future the same way, that the future is bleak, that there are housing crises, there's a food famine crisis happening, there's pandemics happening, there are wars in Israel, there's a war in Russia and Ukraine, there's all sorts of chaotic things happening, happening in the world. And if I just look at it and if I fixate on it, I will lose hope. I will be filled with dread. I will be filled with anxiety and fear, depression, and worries. But thankfully, every episode we've been talking about this past year reminds us that our eyes should not be fixed on the winds and the waves. It shouldn't be fixed on what's happening out in the world, but it should be fixated on what's happening inside this word of God, which promises a hope. A hope, And that's why the verse in Paul's letter here says, For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. You know, when the Bible says talks about hope, it's different from the worldly hope, no? That the world says, kapag, kapag sinasabi ng mundo na, tungkol sa pag-asa na, oh, sana hindi bumagyo, sana hindi mag sana, 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 sana magkaroon ako ng pera para sa bills, para sa ganun-ganun, di ba? Sana, sana, that's, that's the picture of the world's hope. It's wishful thinking. It's, I wish, I hope, I pray, I want this to happen, but I have zero basis to really believe that it will happen. I have zero control and zero assurance on whether it will happen or not. But the biblical hope is what I present to you. It's what I propose to you. The biblical hope is the complete opposite. The biblical hope is complete assurance of the promises of God. The biblical hope is I know this is gonna, this is what's gonna happen. This is what is going to come because my Bible says so, because my God tells me it's going to happen. That is the biblical blessed hope. There is a certain future, not an uncertain one. There is a a, a expectation of good. Can you comment that down below? An expectation of good. Ito po yung ibig pa sabihin nun is that bawat araw ng buhay ko, there is a certain assurance na alam ko Kung anamang nangyayari, kung anamang paghihirap na pinagdadaanan ko ngayon, alam ko na sa katapusan, it's all gonna be good. Magiging maayos to, magiging buo to, magiging okay to. Magkakaayos kami. Diba? That is the biblical hope that there is an expectation it's going to be a good day. And I, I know a lot of people no, na inisip nila, grabe ang dami nangyayari na mabuti sa buhay ko. Tapos natatakot sila. It's too good. It is too good to be true. Now, what's next? Anong masamang mangyayari? Kasi I've, I've, been having it, having, I've been having it so good, something bad is bound to happen. And now they're expectant about bad news. In fact, they put their faith in the bad. They put their faith in the devil, in the enemy, that the devil's going to come and ruin my plans. Yan yung inisip nila. They're so ex- they have so much faith on the bad when the faith that we have should be focused on the good, on God, on the promises and the word of the Lord. So you might be thinking, no, ano ba yung specific hope na tinatukoy natin? I mean, we have a lot of things to hope for as Christians, right? God has given us a book full of, technically six books, 66 books, a book full of the promises of God. And if you read it, you'd know it. <laughs> That's why we encourage you, read it. Go through it. And in one of the episodes, your assignment natin, uh, isulat natin yung mga promises of God na pinaghahawakan natin. No? Because if God says it, so be it. If God says it, it's sure. It's sure to happen. Right? But there's one specific hope that I want us to focus on tonight. Right? And it is what we commonly know as the blessed hope. 
Can you can you write that down below in the comments? Blessed hope. What is this talking about? If you turn with me to Titus, Titus chapter 2, verse 13, Titus is not a book that is commonly opened, I think. But Titus is before Hebrews. So Titus chapter 3, sorry, chapter 2, verse 13. Titus 2, 13. Sabi po dito, While we wait for the blessed hope, Ano ba tong blessed hope na to? The glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are, as Christians, are waiting for, ito yung tinatawag natin, second coming ni Lord. And Titus, or actually Paul, in his letter to Titus, calls it our blessed hope. Why is it blessed? Because we're sure it's gonna happen. Why is it blessed? Because this is what we're holding on to. Ito yung pinanghahawakan natin. That is why it's blessed. So while we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So this is what Christians are supposed to look like. Christians are supposed to look like people who are expected and waiting for the second coming of God. For the second coming of Jesus. So while we wait, anong gagawin natin? Verse 11 to 12. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, godly lives in this present age. Present age. So what Paul is saying here is that this is how we ought to live. Habang naghihintay po tayo, ano dapat gawin? We're supposed to be able to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and live lives self-controlled, upright, and godly in this present age. So presently, habang hindi pa po dumating ang second coming ng Panginoon natin, we must live holy lives, holy godly lives. And we talked about this, di ba? In, kailan na to? I think two episodes ago, no? Ang daming episodes, nine episodes kasi itong series. But we were talking about what holiness means. And holy just means separate, set apart, different. And we were talking about if we want to be different, we want to be holy like God. The God says, be holy for I am holy. It just means walk with him. Walk in his way. Spend time with him. Do what he does. That's what it means. So the only way for us to really do that is if we recognize we have a blessed hope na may hinihintay po tayo, na may dahilan kung bakit nandito po, pa po tayo sa mundo. Because we're holding on to this hope na hindi po tayo iiwanan ng Panginoon. Hindi po tayo kakalimutan Hindi po, hindi po niya tayo makakalimutan, right? So, that's Titus 2.13 and it talks about our blessed hope. So, I don't know when the last time you heard about this, about someone talking about the second coming of Jesus, the blessed hope that we have, but in the in the first century church, in the times of the apostles, they talked about this all the time. All the time. In fact, if you go through the different letters of Paul, the way he would encourage churches, the way he would encourage people like Titus and Timothy, yung parang spiritual sons niya, is he would remind them, remember, may ipinanghahawakan po tayo. That yes, life has its share of storms, of hardships and challenges, but remember, alam po natin anong, anong hinihintay natin. May parating na pag-asa. That's how they encouraged the early church before. Unfortunately, nawala na po yun sa mundo natin ngayon, sa paligid natin ngayon, sa simbahan ngayon. I don't know the last time I heard a sermon preaching about this. Or I don't know the last time I heard either a pastor or a leader or even a fellow Christian encouraging others through this. That, hey, don't worry. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. So let's fight the good fight of faith. Kasi parating na siya. Hindi, hindi tayo may iwan. Right? In, in Jude, so Jude naman is a, a book that's just one chapter. In Jude, Jude is found before Revelation. So it's the second to the last book in the Bible. Jude, chapter, chapter 1, isa lang po yung chapter niya, verse 21. Jude 1, 21. Sabi dito, Keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. This is also referring to the blessed hope. So he's saying, while you wait, keep yourself in God's love. In verse 20, the verse before, sabi dito, But you, dear friends, build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Habang po tayo naghihintay 
Let's build ourselves up in our faith. Let's build ourselves up in prayer. Let's build ourselves up in God's love while we're waiting. That's why we have a specific, beautiful hope that we're sure is to come. We don't know when, pero alam natin parating na. Alam natin. And that's what's so beautiful, right? That's why we can be hopeful while we're in the present. That's why while we're in the present, we can we can be excited and full of hope and expectation of good. Because we know God, who says he's coming, will not will keep his word. No. In Hebrews chapter 10, we're gonna be jumping around different verses tonight. But it's, they're all beautiful verses. In Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 to 25. Hebrews 10, 23 to 25. Sabi po dito, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. You know, the promises that we get, mahalaga lang po sila, depende kung sino nagsabi. Kapag sinabi po ng kaibigan natin, matalik na kaibigan natin, who always keeps his word, her word, that they never, whenever they promise something, they're sure to do it. If they tell us, bukas lilibre kita sa Buffet 101. Bukas lilibre kita sa hotel. Bukas lilibre kita sa ano-ano. Bibilin kita ng plane ticket. Punta tayo sa Singapore, sa Japan. If your close friend who is trustworthy, who is a person of integrity, tells you that, may excite tayo kasi alam, na, alam natin, gagawin talaga nila yun. Na hindi lang po yun bola. How much more are God? But He tells us something. How much more can we believe it? Can we hold on to it? Can we be excited? And even as early as now, rejoice because of it. Because we hold unswervingly to, to the hope that we profess. For he who promised is faithful. Verse two. And so, ang ganda eh, kasi it's not based on us. Hindi po siya base, base sa performance natin na mabait ka ba, mabuti ka ba. Hindi po siya parang Santa Claus na kapag mabait ka, tsaka ka magkakaroon ng regalo. No, 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 no. This is all to do with the faithful nature of God, that God is a promise-keeping God. And because he already said it, he's going to do it. Whether you're good or not. Right? Verse 24, let us consider how we may spur one another towards love and good deeds. So while we're waiting, encourage each other. Tara, let's do good things. Let's love on people. Let's tell them that they are that there is a hope. There is a free gift of salvation. Let us give to the needy. Let us help in charities. Let us volunteer our time and our resources for the good, for the work of God. Right? Let us spur one another towards love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. We'll talk about that later now, but this is a beautiful hope that Christians have. That is why even when our loved ones die, yes, there's sadness, yes, we will miss them, but there is a certain type of joy because we know we're going to see them again very soon. Na ang buhay ng tao, sabi sa Ecclesiastes, it's, it's just a vapor. It's just a mist. Ang, ang bilis lang ng buhay ng tao sa, sa context ng buong eternity. We are a dot in the universe. Our lives are so short. And that what that means is, that might make some people feel small, but for me, that makes me excited. Why? Because I know that the struggles I have now, ang liit lang ng bagay. It's 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 true, it's there, it's real, it's valid, right? Mahirap talaga siya. Minsan masakit. Pero kasi ang liit lang pala niya sa 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 sa, sa, sa tabi ng kabutihan ng Diyos. I can still rejoice. I can still say I have hope and I can hold on to this hope. That's why even at the present we are filled with hope. This is our hopeful present. The next thing we're going to be talking about is hope-driven present. Now, sa present natin, everything now that we do, everything now that we, every way now that we live, it is now being driven by this hope. That, you know, bawat decision natin, dahil na sa blessed hope na to, na pinanghahawakan natin. What does this mean? In Acts chapter 27, actually before you, Sige, mamaya pa naman to. 
Okay, sige. We're gonna be coming back to Hebrews 10, no? Later. Pero for now, punta muna tayo, muna tayo sa Acts. And I hope yung mga regulars natin nasasanay na po tayo sa pag uh, navigate sa Bible. Na alam natin, oh, kung Acts before Romans yan. Gana, nag-gets na natin, mabilis na. Because dapat uh, familiar po tayo. Gets na gets po natin yung Biblia natin. No? Lalo na kung personal Bible mo yan. Baka yung iba nga, pagbukas mo, nandyan na agad eh. That sometimes happens. Sobrang nakakatuwa kapag nangyayari yun. Uh, in any case, Acts chapter 27 verses 23 to 26. So tatlong verses. Acts 27, 23 to 26. Ito po sabi dito. Last night, an angel, so a little context, no? this is Paul uh, arrested in a shipwreck. Uh, well, yeah, they're, they're in a boat. They're sailing to Rome at that, but they're encountering a storm. Binagyo po sila, and they're about to face a shipwreck. So takot na takot lahat ng tao. So, so ito sabi niya ni, ni, ni Pablo, verse 23. Last night, an angel of the Lord, whose I am and whom I serve, so, angel ng Panginoon ko, sinasabi niya, stood beside me. Tinab- tinabihan niya ako at, at sinabi niya, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will ne- it will happen just as he told me. Ganda. Verse 26, Nevertheless, we must run aground on some island. Sinasabi niya, masishipwreck pa rin tayo. Pero huwag kayo matakot. Kasi may pangako ang Panginoon sa akin. You know, when you read this, you would think, no, na bakit parang hindi siya natatakot? Kasi sinabi na nga na, sa, ng Panginoon sa kanya, you will stand trial before Caesar. Nasa kulungan ka pa rin. <laughs> Naarestohan ka pa rin. Pero, because he knows where he's going, because where he knows his destination, he is now able to enjoy his journey. Because he doesn't have to focus, hala, saan ako patungo, saan ako pupunta, mamamatay ba ako dito, o hindi. Hindi niya alam. And that's a scary, uncertain, uh, insecure type of way to live. But because he knew where he was going, he's able to be present and do what he needs to do, which in this case, lead the prisoners and because of the actions of Paul, for sure, I know a lot. They people got to see. Grabe yung pananampalataya nito sa sa Panginoon niya. Baka iba. Baka totoo yung pananampalataya niya. Baka iba. Baka totoo yung Dios niya. And you know, my hope and my prayer is that some, not every one of us, actually, majority of us, we're not gonna be. We're, we're not gonna become preachers. We're not gonna be. We're not gonna become pastors or missionaries. But you know what you're gonna do? We are all still preaching. Maybe not by our words, but by our lives. The way you live your life for Jesus, people are watching. Yung mga kaibigan natin sa paligid natin, baka sinasabi nila, grabe kapag nagdadasal tong taong na to, yung kaibigan ko, parang natutupad, parang parang yung Diyos niya naririnig siya, parang parang may, may nangyayari kapag nagdadasal siya. Bakit yung kaibigan ko parang mal, palaging masaya? Kahit na ma, grabe yung pinagdadaanan niya, masaya pa rin siya. Parang iba yung Panginoon niya. Iba yung, iba yung relihiyon niya. I pray that sometimes, you know, this, the best sermons we can ever preach is by the lives that we live. And Paul was doing exactly that. Sometimes we're so consumed with our destination kasi hindi natin alam, hindi tayo sure, pupunta ba ako sa langit o sa impyerno. But you know, because of what Jesus has done on the cross, we are sure of where we're going. And now we can be present and enjoy the journey now. Kasi alam naman natin saan tayo patungo. Hindi na natin kailangan problemahin yun. Now we could be present in joy. And now every action that we do, everything that we every everything that we do now at present can be in light of the peace we, we, we get, the hope that we get from our future, from our sure blessed hope. What does this mean? It means, what this means is that Whenever we meet with our friends now, because we know where we're going, because we know that despite anong mga nangyayari ng gulo sa mundo, alam natin yung, yung eternity natin, secure na siya sa Panginoon. And we know that Jesus is coming back. We know that at the end of all this, we win because our God will save us. We can now share the hope that we have to our friends who are, who are riddled 
with fear and uncertainty and anxiety and and and, and depression. Now, when my friends come to me and say, talaga, gusto mo pa uh, magkaanak? Eh, ganito yung mundo. I can now share with them. Alam mo bakit? Kasi ito actually yung pananaw ko sa kinabukasan ko, sa, sa mundo ngayon. I know what's going to happen. That's why I have a hope. You can have this hope too. That the God I serve, the God that promises this of me, He can. He is promising the same thing to you. We can. This is how we let our present be driven by this blessed hope that we profess, that we hold on to and cling to so so tightly. And because Paul knew, hindi ako mamamatay dito, he is able to respond in faith rather than fear. Same thing with us. Because we know we're not going to die here. We know we're not going to be troubled here. We know that we will get through this. Even kung mahirap, even kung may resistance minsan, alam natin, we will emerge at the end triumphant and victorious. We don't have to respond in fear and anxiety and worry. We can respond in faith. Because we know that God is a God who provides. We don't have to be worried when the bills come. We, we Lord, God will make a way. God will make a way. That's why, diba, yung, yung, yung pinag-usapan natin kanina sa Romans, that all things will work together for the good of those who love Him. Because we are eagerly waiting on the Lord. You know, this is actually the, we, we, we read about this a few episodes ago, no? na yung sa Luke 18.8, yung persistent widow, yung, yung kinakulit na yung, yung judge niya. No? And Jesus said at the end of that parable, when I return to earth, will I see faith? And diba, we, we, we likened it, we connected to a picture of you nasa airport tayo, uh, tapos dumating si Jesus sa arrivals. Nandyan ba tayo? Naghihintay ba tayo? Na Jesus, yung may, may hawak tayo na car, Jesus, or here, we are waiting for you all this time. Because that's what Jesus is waiting for. That's what he's hoping for and expecting from us. I pray that we will be counted among those eagerly awaiting and expected of his return. I pray that when people talk about the end times and all these things, what props up in our spirit isn't fear, but what props up in our spirit is excitement and hope and peace and joy. Because we know, yes, Jesus is coming. And so while we're here, I'm not saying let's that, let that be our entire focus, sell everything you have, quit your job, quit your school. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is while we're here, because we know where we're going, we can now be present and do things that matter for the Lord and, and, and live lives full of hope, full of grace, full of love, full of joy, full of peace, and share that share that to the other people around us. You know, in we, we've been talking about this verse in Psalms 90, verse 12. We don't have to go there now for the sake of time. But Psalms 90, verse 12 talks about, Lord, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. This is what it's about. Now, Lord, show me the signs of the times para alam ko gaano kabilis dapat akong kumilos. That patapos na pala yung oras. So all the more, we need to share the gospel to our loved ones. We need to tell them there is a hope that is also available for them. We need to share that to our friends. So again, it's not something that should ins that should inspire fear, but it's, it's something that should bring about peace and joy and love, right? That's why it's all it's about what we do while we wait. Kaya yung verse na binasa natin kanina sa Hebrews 10. Hindi na natin babalikan, no? sasabihin ko na lang. Hebrews 10, 25, it says there that all the more that you see the day approaching, do not forsake the gathering. Fellowship with your belie fellow believers. Go to church. Attend life. <laughs> Kasi iba pa rin po, when we're sharing life, when we're living every day, doing life together, bearing each other's yoke, di ba? Ito pinagsabi natin last episode. Bearing each other's yoke and burdens, partnering together in faith, encouraging one another to love and do good deeds. All the more as we see that they approaching, let us run the race fight the good fight of faith. Kasi malapit na yung finish line. Ayusin na natin. Parating na ang Panginoon. Ayusin na natin ang buhay natin. And way too, I have way too many friends who tell me that, yes, I'll give my life to Jesus kapag nasa deathbed na tayo. Ka kapatid, God has a promise for you and me today that we can enjoy at present. Today, we can enjoy all of these things. You know, there's this verse in 2 Peter. Again, we're not going to go there, but for those of you taking notes, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. 
Peter there says that we have everything we need already for life and godliness. What he's saying is that minsan feeling natin, Lord, kulang pa to, kailangan ko pa ng biyaya, kailangan ko pa, kailangan niyo pa akong baguhin para akong kumilos para sa para sa kingdom niyo, para sa simbahan niyo. Kailangan ko pa to, A, B, C, D. But Peter saying, as you are now, with what you have, with what God has given you, with the gifts and talents, but really more, more importantly, with the Holy Spirit that He has given you, the moment we get saved, the moment we accepted Jesus in our lives, you have all you need to start living a life of grace, to start living a life of love, to start living a life of holiness, to start telling people that God loves them, to start showing people that there's this blessed hope. You are enough in the Lord right now. You don't need a doctorate degree. You don't need a seminary degree. You don't need to start a Spotify or a platform. Where you are now with your friends, with your contacts, with your circles of influence, with your families, you can start telling them about the truth and love of God for them. Because Why? Because we are driven by the blessed hope. Because every action now, we plan accordingly. That ito yung end goal kasi natin. Ito yung timeline natin. Let's take the steps towards that. Right? Let's make the most and this is what we've been saying the past episodes, this entire series, really. Let's make the most out of our time today. And the only way to do that is we're, if we're present. If we are presently being used by the Lord, right? So we spoke about the hopeful present. Why we can, why our present, ngayon pa lang, we can be full of hope, expecting good from the Lord. And we, we spoke about being driven by hope. Lastly, we're going to be talking about the joyful present or the joy-filled present. And you know, the last episode, we were talking about the importance of joy, that the joy of the Lord is our strength and why we want joy. It's so affection of attention. We're talking about all, all these things about joy. And it's beautiful. But you know, this is what it's all about, right? That, that again, when we, when we talk about the blessed hope, it's, it's really not for us to be filled with fear, but with joy. Bakit excited na tayo eh? Na parating ng Panginoon. The, the same way, like when, when I know, oi, I'm gonna see my family again from Singapore, from Japan. Excited ako because I can't wait to spend time with them. It's the same thing with the Lord. Jesus is coming. I can't wait to meet him. I can't wait. Ako, basa ako. Hindi ko alam sa inyo, basa ako when I see Jesus. I'm, I'm, most likely I'm gonna fall down in worship. But after that, I wanna hug him. I'm excited to hug Jesus. I, I want that. I want to spend time with Jesus. Kaya hindi ko, wag naman ma-offend yung mga iba dito, kung kayo to, sorry na lang. But I don't understand people who when they hear of Jesus is coming, natatakot sila. Because Jesus is my Savior. He is my God. He's my best friend. He's closer than a brother. He knows me. He loves me from day one. So I can't wait to be with Him. Because that's what it's all about. He's the only person who has ever existed who loves you completely, 100%, more than you even love yourself, more than anyone could ever love you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. I hope and I pray that that's so clear, that it strikes your hearts tonight that Jesus loves you. And sometimes, right? mga doctrina teaching skanta ng mga bata but there's this one song Jesus loves me this I know for the Bible tells me so isn't that the most important thing I know so many adults so many people who've been Christians for decades who are still not sure that Jesus loves them who sometimes kapag nagkakasala tayo pinisip nila mahal pa ba ng Panginoon yes it's so basic and it's so important. It's what it's all about. It is all what it's all. This is what it's all about. That's why we have a hope. That's why we can hold on and hold fast to God. That's why the 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 passage we read, the first passage we read in Romans eight, it talks about the future glory. That's why no matter the hardships now, kaya natin. Hindi lang tiisin. But we can go through it as conquerors, as victors, as kings, as priests. Because I already know the ending. It doesn't matter what the enemy throws against me. 
alam natin, panalo, hindi lang mananala tayo, panalo na tayo eh. So we can look at the enemy and say, hit me with your best shot. Because I know the ending is, Jesus is coming for me. Jesus is coming to rescue me. Jesus is coming to save me. This is the foundation and the source of hope that we are holding on to. You know, in Hebrews 12, verses 2 to 3, Hebrews 12, 2 to 3, it says here, Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning a shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. What, what the author of Hebrews, we don't know who that is, is writing here to say is that, Fix your eyes on Jesus if you want to be strong in the faith and not get discouraged and lose heart. Fix your eyes on Jesus. The author and perfecter, another another version says, finisher of our faith. Inisip natin minsan, Lord, paano kung nag-backslide ako? Paano, what if I stray? What if I, what if I run away from you? What if I lose this? But you know, He doesn't only start our relationship with Him. He makes sure that He finishes with us together. He will pursue us as long as we remain open and humble and in love with Him and surrender to Him. He will not let us go. That's why who for the joy set before Him endured the cross, scorning its shame. The, the cross was painful. It is scientifically the most painful way to die. So Jesus did not not, not enjoy that. If anything, you look at the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was, was, was in, in such conflict Jesus, Lord, if if it's possible, please take this cup away from me. Kung hindi ko kailangan mamatay sa cross, ko ba ibang paraan? Please, Lord, Ama, tanggalin niyo to sa akin. Pero, kung anong, kung anong gusto mo, masusunod. Yun ang masusunod. Jesus was saying, He didn't enjoy the cross. He endured it. He persevered despite it. Why? How? Ano yung sikreto niya? Because there's this joy that is before him. And the joy that is before him is he knew as with every whip that was striping his back, that was ripping away at his body, his eyes wasn't on the cross. His eyes wasn't on the suffering. His eyes was on the blessed hope after that. After all this, we will be together. On the cross, he was he, he could see our faces, your faces. On the cross, he was saying, I'm going to see you. We're going to be together in heaven. I just have to go through this for you because I love you and I want to spend eternity with you. You are what strengthened Jesus through the cross. His love for you. He was seeing your face. He was calling out your name. He was reaching out to you. That's what strengthened him. And now what will strengthen us is if we hold on and hold fast to the Lord. And you know, you don't have to wait until you die to experience this. In Psalms 27 verse 13, David says, I, I, have, I was young, but now I am old and I have never seen the righteous begging for bread. David talks about in that verse, he says that we will experience the goodness of God in the land of the living. David was saying, habang ngayon na, nandito tayo sa mundo, in our present time, in this present age, we're able to experience the promises and fullness of God. What breaks my heart is when I see Christians who let go. When I see Christians who, who compromise and settle. Na yes, maybe in heaven, wala na akong sakit. Maybe in heaven, I don't have to worry about provision. Maybe in heaven, maybe in heaven. But but it, it breaks my heart because they, they, they seem to forget that while we're here on earth, God has already promised these things to us. You don't have to wait. You can experience heaven here on earth because we have access to the Father. So let's experience it all in this present day and age. That's why, second to the last verse I'm going to share, in James 1, verses 2 to 4, James 1, 2 to 4, it teaches us here, consider it pure joy. Diba ito? Joyful present. Consider it pure joy, my brothers. Ito yung ayaw natin makinggan eh. Whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking 
anything, not lacking anything. Can you comment down below? Pure joy. Pure joy. Why are we able to rejoice when there are trials? Not because we like trials. Not because we like suffering. No, we're not masochists. But we can be joyful because we know that the ending of all this will cause us to be mature and complete in the blessed hope of Jesus. We know that, Lord, with every trial, I depend on you. I experience more of your goodness and love. I know that with every trial, I can hold fast to you. I know that with every trial, it strengthens my, my faith and I see more of God's goodness and grace. Like in trials of, of, of finances, it's an opportunity to see God's provision. In trials of health issues, if, if the doctor tells you bad news about your health, it's an opportunity to see God heal you. Every trial is an opportunity to see how God moves, to see the blessed hope in play at your present situation and at your present life. So my hope and my prayer is this, and this is the verse I'm going to be leaving behind with you before we move on to the bring to the table section. In Luke 22, verse 18, Luke 22, verse 18, after, in the Last Supper, when Jesus instituted this beautiful and powerful practice and reminder to the disciples, Luke 22, 18, this is a promise that Jesus told them. Sabinia, for I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Jesus was saying, and, and right now you can prepare your communion elements, the bread and the cup, if, if you haven't yet. But Jesus is saying here that he is also eagerly, Jesus is also eagerly waiting for our grand reunion with him. I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. You know, the picture that Jesus gave us in the second coming, when we go home to heaven, is that he said there's going to be a great banquet, a great big banquet table, a wedding feast, fiesta po, buffet po. When we get to heaven, there's going to be a buffet, a wedding feast that we can just spend eternity in joy, in communion, in relationship, in fellowship, in intimacy with the Father, with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit. Jesus is waiting eagerly for that moment. So I pray that that same eagerness, that same love, that same craving for Jesus is what's present in our hearts. Now, there might be some of us tonight, as we as we transition to communion, there might be some of us tonight who are a bit worried or maybe even guilty that baka feeling nyo na, hala, I don't, I don't, I'm not that excited about it. That's okay. Because the more we walk with the Lord, the more we experience His love for us, the more we fall in love with Him. The more we enjoy Him, the more we crave for more and more of Him in our life. That every day, Lord, I want to be with you because He's so good. That Lord, I can't wait to be in heaven. Because not, not so that I can escape hell, but because I want to spend time with you. I have so many questions, Lord. I can't wait to learn from you, to embrace you, to be with you, to be loved by you physically. So if, if, if that's you and you feel like, I don't, I'm not that excited, it's okay. Just continue walking with Him. Just continue spending time with Him and being in relationship with Him. Just continue receiving His love for you. Because as we receive His love and experience His goodness, we fall more and more in love with Him. So as Jesus is waiting for us, I pray that we're excited for Jesus. And every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, right? Jesus says through Paul, Sabani Paul, for I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. So what Paul experienced, he's sharing with us. And now we're sharing it with each other, right? The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given things, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this whenever you eat it in remembrance of me. The body signifies our wholeness. That by his stripes, we have been healed. So we don't have to go through disease and illness and all these things. We take care of our bodies, but when the enemy attacks us, Jesus is saying healing is in his name. But also, Jesus is showing us we are one body. 
We are all one body. You and I, we are all connected because of Jesus. We, we could call each other brother, sister, kapatid, because we share a same family in the spirit. And then Jesus proceeds after supper. He took the cup and said, this is my cup, which is the covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus is saying, because of the blood, there is now forgiveness of sins. It washes our sins white again. We are now cleansed, redeemed, purified and forgiven because of the blood that Jesus shed. The, the Bible says that without the shedding of the blood, there could be no forgiveness of sins. That's why Jesus had to die on the cross. So that our sins, your sins, my sins can be forgiven, past, present, and future. And now we experience relationship with the Father. We can call him Abba, Father, because now we're sons and daughters of the Lord, of the Most High. And Jesus says, as often as you eat this and drink this, do this as often as you can. For as you do, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus is saying, every time we do communion, it's a reminder of the blessed hope. Jesus is coming. This is a time now for us as we approach the communion table to leave behind the burdens and worries and depression and all these things that's, 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 that's clouding our brains. Let's leave it all behind here. And let us now partake of the peace of God, of the joy, of the hope that he has made available to us so that we can be present. We can be hopeful in the present. We can be hope-driven in the present and we can be joyful in the present. Let's pray for the uh, elements as we as we receive them. Father, we, we thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross that as Jesus died for us, Father, we receive the bread and what it signifies, what it represents, what it symbolizes. We receive, Lord God, this perfect health that Jesus has made available to us, this divine health that because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, we can enjoy bodily health right now where we live in this world. And Father, I thank you for the cup that because of the shedding of the blood of Christ, we are redeemed, set free, saved, delivered. And now we can call you our heavenly Father who loves us. We could now call you our family. We could now call ourselves Christians, which really just means we're followers of Jesus, which really just means we are part of the family of Jesus, your family, Father. So, Father, we thank you because we share this special relationship and access to you, that we can go to you anytime without fear, without condemnation, without shame, without guilt. And so, Father, we love you. We worship you. We thank you for this fellowship, this communion, that we enjoy together with you. Lord, I speak your peace and your joy and your hope upon each and every one of us as we wait eagerly, excitedly, expectantly for the second coming of Jesus. Father, we thank you because while we're here on earth, we are already enjoying your presence and we're excited for more. We're excited to see more and be used by you more. We love you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's talk, partake of the bread. And let's partake of the cup. Sister Marie. Praise God, Josh. No? Every end of the month, we come together in the table of our Lord Jesus. But well said on your explanation, Josh, about what communion is because some people are not that aware that it is very important. And you can do it in your home also, Paul, no? not, not just at the end of the month. no. And tonight we thank the Lord as we landed the present series, Hopeful. Uh, we're, we're very hopeful and we're going to be very excited. Alam nyo yung medyo... Before, I was guilty in sinasabi ni Josh na natakot pagdating ng second coming. But from glory to glory, praise God, we are here in this space. And now we know that we should be excited. So, um, the way how we approach God is that we don't have to be fearful. And we praise God dahil katabi natin siya ngayon. We reserve a seat for Him. No? Yung assignment last episode 8, that is where you see Jesus sitting beside you. Praise God, praise God. 
you know this this one of the most practical episode po is this one itong uh, present series and you know I hope that you can enjoy it with your children kung babalikan niyo po yung episode 1 to episode 9 this could be one of the series na starting pwedeng basic ninyo ito sa inyong mga anak because relate na relate sila po dito amen praise god praise god and uh, once again we'd like to uh, give importance that we have launched our podcast in spotify we want to thank you all for advance thanking you for sharing the link so that many people will hear the good news of our lord jesus christ especially dun sa mga loved ones niyo po so tonight we're so thankful uh, to your presence and of course our special guest sitting beside us our lord jesus christ thank you josh and can you pray for everyone as we close the uh, um, series yes you know the things we talk about here every tuesday thursday we're not going to capture it all or or we're not going to be transformed just like that in one second that's why in the previous episode, pinag-usapan po natin na kailangan natin nguyain, ruminate, meditate on the Word of God again and again and again and again. Why? Because we're all, all of us are works in progress. Wala po sa atin perfect. God is doing a work in us. That's why we need more of His Word. And that's why I, I hope and I pray now that you can use the podcast that we made available in Spotify to r- repeat all the teachings, all the, our discussions, and that you yourself can also meditate on it. And slowly, we're not the ones who do it, it's the Holy Spirit. But as, as we put more of the word inside our hearts and our spirits, it slowly transforms and washes us from within. And that is the work of the Holy Spirit. So as we end this present series, may we always remember to be present where we are, with our Lord, with our families, with our friends, wherever you are. Let us be present because God has so much for you. Madalangan po tayo. Father, we just thank you so much for always drawing us closer to you. We thank you because we know that there are no boundaries anymore between us and you. That you have tore the veil and because of Jesus, we can come before you boldly through him. Father, I pray that as we end this series and as we enter into the month of December, Lord, I pray that we're able to spend more and more time focusing on you as we reflect more of your love, more of your goodness, more of your grace to our family members, to our loved ones, to our friends, to everyone around us, even to the strangers, that we're able to, when people see us, they will see God. They will see Jesus, a loving Jesus within us. And Lord, continue to transform each and every one of us, Lord, as we spend time fellowshipping with each other, and communing with you. Lord, I just speak a blessing to each and every family represented here tonight, every individual. May your presence abide in them and with them. May they always be aware, Lord God, that they are never alone, but you see them and you walk through life with them. May your hand of protection be with each and every one of us. May you use us, Lord God, to be channels of your love and your light as we experience your blessed hope in our present day and in our present age. We love you, Lord, and we dedicate our lives to you. Thank you, Lord, for you're so good. All this we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Kwentuhan po ng pag-ibig ni Lord. Ito po ang Red Talks. November series, present series. Nine episodes po tayo. Thank you so much, everyone. Mahal po namin kayo and see you next month. That will be next week for our brand new series. Good night po. Thank you so much Josh. Good night. night. Good night. Good night po.